Hey guys, Luke here from Flukes Sky Surfing and I've made a new hydrofoil and today we're going to put it to the test. So this new hydrofoil is based on much of the same design principles as my previous version, version 3. So this is version number 4, except we've got a couple of different upgrades and a few differences. So it has the same construction as the Model 3. So we've got a hand-shaped timber core with fiberglass and carbon fiber layup, all hand laid. So this makes it great for making it in the garage and the DIY projects. So we have the same resting angle of attack the same cord length, the same foil design, the same swept and tapered wing tips, all of this to build a foil that actually works, not something that just looks like a foil, but that we can actually get out there, we know it's going to fly. However, it has a couple of new structural upgrades. The first off being the socket connection on the underside of the wing. So this is where it joins to the fuselage. This is going to create a lot of extra stiffness. Um, it allows us to make bigger wings. So you can, you know, that extra strength around that, that section means that we can go to higher wing spans. So that brings me to the size of this wing. So this wing has the same cord width, but a longer wing span, if you can see that. So going out to 900 millimeters. That gives a approximate square centimeter size of 1,050 and a true aspect ratio of 7.6. So this slightly higher aspect ratio, slightly wider wingspan, it's going to still work for me with the kite, but also allow me to try it with the para wing as well. And we can keep making bigger wings um, using these new, this new process here to um, with the socket connection. One of the other noticeable changes is the full carbon layup. So this, it creates more of a production foil look and feel. So it's got that aesthetic to it, but also more stiffness throughout the entire wing. And we also have this concave, which increases camber for the underside of the wing, which we didn't have in the version three either. So this is said to create earlier lift at slower speeds, lower stall speeds and also better for pumping. So that's gonna to remain to be seen. We're gonna get that, we're gonna test that out today. So another upgrade for the version is the socket connection in the fuselage. And so combining that with the new socket connection in the wing, we're gonna get a lot of lateral stability in the wing. So it's not gonna sort of shake from side to side while I'm riding it. And also one of the other slight changes is with this new shape, it does sort of bring the leading edge slightly down on the front there. And so that will have just flattened out this wing ever so slightly. So changed that resting angle of attack, probably from one and a half degrees down to maybe one degree. And so I'm curious to see if it handles speed as a result of that, if we're still getting the early lift. So lots of things that I'm gonna be looking for on the water and all things going well, this is going to be the next DIY video series. It's still built in a way that you can build it at home. And so I'm going to do a whole nother series making the same wing again with a set of plans and also, you know, all of the step-by-step -step instructions. So let's get it out there, see how it performs and yeah, hopefully have some fun. Okay, so I've been riding it for a little over a week now. Different conditions and also on the on the power wing and also on the kite. And so let's talk a little bit about what it did well, what it didn't do so well and sort of my final, my thoughts on, on the new design. So first off, my very first impression when I got up on a foil with the kite, so my very first flight, dove the kite, I was straight up onto foil, and what went into my head in that exact moment was, oh, this feels really nice and stable. That was sort of my very first impression. And I know that, um, you know, maybe that's not very descriptive, but that was like a nice first impression to be like, okay, it doesn't feel like it's twitching. I don't feel like I'm getting like this really weird roll or this vibration or, or really like sensitive to my movements. It would just felt like, oh, okay, I'm on the foil and it's working. So that was a really cool first impression. Then of course I started to sort of look at um, how does it perform in other ways? So the first thing that I looked for was speed. I slowed down and I noticed that yes, it could handle a slower speed. I was looking for that slower stall speed. I can't be 100% certain if it was because of this new camber design or if it's just because it's bigger than the Model 3, so of course it's going to be able to go a bit slower. Um, it couldn't go quite as slow as my production foil, but it was, again, it's smaller than the production foil, so I'm not sure if the design, um, you know, really, 
helped with the stall speed or if it was just like I say, it's just a bigger foil so of course it goes slower. Because when I went to high speed, so I sort of with the kite, I sort of dove the kite and just sort of tried to maintain a, a decent speed with the kite and it didn't really want to push as fast as the Model 3. So it, it like I would have had to really force it if I wanted to get a lot of high speed out of it. And again, that could have that same sort of reasoning where while it's bigger, so it's generating more lift, so it's harder to hold down and it's generating more drag. So the speed test, it's sort of, it was definitely easier to ride because I could go slower um, and it, you know, I, I wouldn't be going that much faster. If I'm not racing, I wouldn't be going that much faster than that anyway. Um, but the speed test was sort of like, it, it was interesting because this one, like I said, I can really push this on a kite and go a lot faster. So it might be the fact that it's got a flat bottom as well, so it's not generating that much lift. But this one definitely does stall out faster than this one at slow speeds. Um, but again, this one is significantly bigger than this one, so hard to say. I think that the biggest surprising benefit of this wing that I wasn't expecting, that I was really uh, happy to see, it was exciting really, was its ability to ventilate. So when I got the wing tip out of the, out of the water, accidentally the first time, normally that I would see that ventilation come down the wing and cause the wing to either wobble or sometimes even crash. And this one just like was smooth as anything. So the wing tip would just come out, cut straight out of the out of the water surface, straight back in like nothing had happened. So much so that on one of the sessions, I was just riding on the kite and I got sort of this gust and as I was going over a swell, and so I sort of got a bit too high, and the whole foil came out onto the water surface, breached out, and just slid back in like it was nothing again, like really stable, didn't crash or anything. And so I was like, wow, that is actually a really cool sort of quality of this foil that I wasn't expecting at all. And I think I'd put that down to this camber. I think that's what that 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 win is there, that the camber is actually allowing that foil to, to do exactly that. And maybe the more slimmed out wing tips on this particular design. Then I took it out on the para wing and because I'm learning to para wing, my very first impression uh, when I got up on the power wing was, oh yeah, this feels normal as again. Same, sort of that same feeling of, oh yeah, this foil feels like fine to ride. Um, and what surprised me on that was that on the 1500 centimeter production foil, I can kind of get the same performance out of the two of them. So this being 1050 is more sporty, so it feels sort of more fun to ride just in general but it still had the same sort of low end. So I could still actually kind of get up on foil in the same conditions as the 1500 to this 1050. So that was cool to see as well. Um, it's probably still a little small for me on the power wing because I'm learning. I'm not getting quite as, you know, I just don't have really the skills on the power wing in order to really focus on still learning to fly that thing and carve on the, on the foil. So um, I think I'd actually benefit from maybe a little bit of a bigger foil for the para wing anyway, like to the 1200, maybe 1300. <clears throat> but it's working. So I was out there today on it, cruising around. Um, as you can see, lots of battle scars. So um, I've been putting it really through its paces. You can probably see all of this. Hitting the reef, hitting kelp just getting absolutely tossed off it all the time um, and so it's it's sustained a bit of damage but it's actually been really durable so I think one of the cool things about making it yourself is that you know this is a really easy fix for me I can either just wet and dry it back out if they're minor or I can give it a whole nother finishing coat of resin and and bring it right back up to as new condition and so um, I'm not worried about the damage but it's the fact that it hasn't sort of broken apart, I haven't exposed anything, particularly on these sections where that's been hitting rocks. And even though it's sort of chipping, it's not, you know, they're sensitive areas and it hasn't actually broken off at all. So that's cool as well. So the durability seems good. The socket connection is still strong. Um, so I'm really happy the, the way that's gone as well. So all in all, those things are, are all positives. So another thing that I know people will want to know about is pumping and glide. And I think that pumping is feeling pretty nice, although it's only been uh, sort of kite assisted or power wing assisted. So I'm sort of turning down wind, I'm giving it a bit of a pump and I can feel that it's generating 
uh, energy. I can also sort of do the water starts with the power wing, so I'm feeling that energy being generated through the pumping as well. Uh, but I haven't dock started it or anything like that. I'm not just trying to pump around in flat water, but it feels pretty good uh, so far. It's going to be a little bit more skill on my part with the power wing because I'm still learning it. I need to sort of perfect that uh, to be able to stow the power wing, which I have not been able to do yet. And so then I can really test that carving and glide and pumping through the swells, but uh, that's to come. But so far it's feeling pretty good. So all in all, I think it's a more forgiving foil. I think it's, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Everyone that's seen it down the beach is surprised that I've made it um, and they've been sort of liking it to other production foils that they've seen. So I think we're on the right track with it as well, which is sweet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making this one for the next video series. So how to build your hydrofoil from home. We're going to be making this foil. Um, and I'm thinking I might even just make a slight modification, bring it up to about 1200 centimeters, but it's going to be exactly the same processes as this one. Um, and so we're basically just copying this and, and all the production techniques that I've done on this one. We're just going to carry through to the next version. Well, it'll still be version four, but we'll do the 1200 centimeter. Um, and so I've got that little bit extra wingspan for that glide and that pumping for the power wing, which is something that I'm sort of getting into. But this, what I really did like about this is the crossover between the kiting and the power winging. So it was kind of like I could ride it with the kite easily and I could ride it with the power wing. So it was the perfect size, I'd say, for if the, the crossover, if my skills were better with the power winging. That's sort of the uh, limitation. Not so much the foil, but the, the fact that I just don't really have the skills on the power wing yet. So yeah, I am stoked with it. I think um, big upgrade. So like I said, we're going to go through it all again with all the series. So hopefully you guys, if you're following along and even if you built the Model 3, um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you also, we'll make a video for how you can do the socket connection uh, sort of onto this one as well if you want to just modify your Model 3. But you can also just follow along and build a whole nother new one and and, uh, and put it on the front like I've done. Yeah, this is the Model 3 uh, fuselage that I've modified and the Model 3 uh, rear wing, so it's kind of easy just to start making these front wings and just adding them on, and that was sort of a big part of it. I wanted to have this modular sort of, uh, you know, like all most foil brands are, but so you can make it from home, build the fuselage once, build the rear wing, and then start playing around with different front wing designs. So yeah, hopefully you guys are stoked, I'm stoked, and we'll make some more foils. So thanks again for watching guys, Luke here, and I'll see you in coming videos.